All right, let's go over this. Let's, let's go over the uh, let's go over the overall uh, software. Uh, first of all, um, the release is uh, we are releasing the software. We have everything coded, everything done. We had to work a few issues out, and uh, we get it all worked out. And uh, so, uh, all those that uh, lease the program, um, Jiro will work diligently the next couple of days on trying to get you guys up and running. Remember, your your software will not start if you just lease the software until it actually is on your PC and uh, you got everything uh, everything running smooth. So just be aware of that. Uh, and uh, we appreciate your patience. We had to. We're really new to Ninja Eight from Ninja Seven. It's a little bit different. So it took us a little while to get around uh, some of the code. We got everything worked out. And everything uh, runs nice and smooth, and uh, the product is uh, really exciting going forward because if you use it properly can really call some really nice inflection points in the market. First of all, Mike had a question in the trade room, and this is what uh, uh, some members do not want to lease a program. They want to view the arrows in the room. And the, the more emails I get about this is I'm probably going to put a longer term. Um, I was just going to put a five cent in the room on, uh, on oil and, and gold, but the signals are so accurate on the longer term time frames with the trend filter. I'll probably activate the trend filter for you guys and gals that don't uh, lease the program because you won't have an audible alert to fire and um, so look for that and I'll go over that tomorrow in the room. The more I thought about it, I got a lot of emails about today that the traders would prefer um, uh, uh, arrows that don't come up as much and uh, and actually are with overall trend direction and uh, that's something I'll show you how to do on your own. Uh, there's a trend filter built into it. Uh, you can toggle it on uh, and I'll show you how to do that. So we look at crew today. The, the, the software, what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to find the sweet spots in the market, market structure and market swings. This is what the trend filter on today. And I'm going to show you, you can actually have more trades. I'll show you what to do uh, inside the software in a second. They actually call this top, this top of trend uh, all the way down. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, the, the software is very versatile, meaning, you know, if you want more swings, I'm going to show you how to put more swings in. And uh, there's a couple ways you can learn how to trade it. We'll have another conference call on how to trade uh, arrows that uh, where the market structure fails you know, with overall trend direction. Those are very, very simple setups. Uh, in other words, if you are in a, let's say you're working on a smaller time frame chart and you get a green arrow that pops up. Well, if that low structure is broken and the trend is down, you short the close right below that low of that arrow. You put your stop two bars back, small stop, and today, crude oil provided some big winners like that today. So I'll go over on the next conference call on that. Uh, we don't have to go over today. Let's go over just overall trend filter direction. That's the most easiest way to trade this is if you toggle the trend filter on. And like Mike was saying, Mike, your question was, well, I prefer the arrows just coming up with overall trend structure. I think that, I think that was your question in the trade room, wasn't it, when I was talking to you uh, 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 the latter part of the session today? I think what Mike was saying is said, hey, can I get just the arrows with overall trend structure? If the market's downtrending, uh, lower highs, can I just see the red arrows and trending up? Yes. I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? And then there's another way you can do it where you can see more swings in the market where let's say that this structure is broken, and I'm going to show you how to put more swings up. If that structure is every broken and I'm closed above, and I break and I retest it. I did a video on that last week. I would take that long on an ABC long because that's a major structure in the market. And I'll show you how to do that. I think we'll say that for the next conference call uh, for members only because it's a uh, it's a cool little technique that I picked up when I was a small order execution trader in the mid 90s. And uh, these arrows, they're really neat when it does it because uh, it happened on three times on crew back to back in the afternoon um, and uh, with trend direction. Uh, uh, and I'll show you the market structure said it was in an area to buy a broke structure. It retested it and it tanked. So we see that a lot in uh, if you do a lot of smaller time frame markets. If you do larger time frame markets, you're not going to get a lot of arrows on larger time frames. The PDF that I have for you, it's going to go over both type of markets. It's going to say, hey, if you're a small short scalper, here's a time frame you want to do. And I'm going to show you a technique how to trade off of these arrows. And, um, uh, and then if you're longer term, if you want to trade off longer term, because this has an audible alert to it, once this bar closes, let me blow this up, make sure you guys understand this because you're getting the software. When this, when this fires this today, 
So let's we'll see here trading crude on this time frame. And this is with the trend filter. Okay. So let's say you're trading with the trend filter and the, you're trading this on your on your PC. The audible alert, it'll be like a little missile that sounds off on your on your speakers. That will go off when that happens. I don't have that ability in the trade room, but uh, with your own computer, you do have the ability to uh, to have audible alerts. And I set it to sound like a little missile, a little gunfire. Uh, so when that comes up, the arrow is going to fire at the close of this bar. So at the close of this uh, bar, that is going to be your arrow. Now, the best arrows you're going to get is when they fire over top of an indecision bar like this with overall trend direction. So if you move an average uh, trend filter that we have on the market profiles down, you know, this is obviously a great play and this is a great play because they match up quite well. So because it's an indecision bar, so it's not red, it's not green, uh, it is, it's just a vertical line. I, I, we have the templates already made for you. So when you lease the software also, Jiro has these templates already made for you. So it's plug and play. The workspaces are made up for you also. You can design your own workspace. You don't have to have it like I have it, um, you know, in, in the room. You know, I have it where the market profile, uh, it, it, you got the market profile set up right here to the left. You got the market profile set up to the left. You can see the trend direction is down, right? So the trend direction is down this afternoon. So these sell errors were viable sells. But we have market profile. Here's how template's going to be set up. You got market profile's going to be set up to your left. The arrow's going to be set up to your right. And then right below that is market delta. Now, once these arrows fire, okay, once these arrows fire, when these arrows fire, I want you to get confirmation with delta. So in other words, if I'm taking this sell arrow right here, if I'm taking this sell arrow, oops, what am I doing here? If I'm taking this sell arrow at, at right here, what you want to do is you want to see if market delta is going to confirm. So I want a negative market delta. I want to see negative market delta. So you see how you have more negative market delta right here? Let me blow this up for you a little bit. I'm going to help you out. This is what I want to match up. And here's the easiest way to trade it. If I'm trending down, structure's down, right? If, I'm, if my structure's down, guess what I want to do? I want to look for sell arrows that fire with market delta confirmation. So right here, my arrow fired. Right here, my delta confirmation told me that we are good to go for the short. So you can open up the position and you try to get short the market and your stop is going to be two ticks above the swing high. The initial stop is going to be two ticks above this swing. Sell the first target. And then what you got to try to do is try to see if the runner can run. That's your goal. You're trying to see if the runner can run as much as possible. We want to try to let that run a run is a great trade. Obviously, the market tanked and fell apart. But my key point is, is that I want error with, I want to sell with market delta confirmation because that's going to give me the comfort. Now, 590 was a whole, huge order bounce anyway, but if it closes, the next bar closes green on market delta. If it closes green, yeah, it's a five Simrinko fish. If this closes green, right here, if this closes green, if this closes green, we got to bail on the trade, the next bar. That means there's no uh, follow through on order flow. But so you get, you get the overall, you get the overall arrow, you look for a, the confirmation on market delta to fight you in the trade. Okay. So that's key. That's called market structure. And that's what we want to do. So that's your basic setup, how you're going to trade the system. That's a very key basic setup. You know, if your trend's down, if your trend's down, you get it, sell arrow, negative market delta, let it close, open up, two ticks above the swing high. If the next delta is green, get out with a small, small uh, loss. If it happens two bars later, you can even take a small little profit if you want, if it turns green, so, or a small loss. So that's what we want to do with overall market structure. Now, the whole reason for these arrows is this. Why did they come up? Why they come up? The key is this, is that these guys come up based upon market structure. So it, it, it looks at a small uh, swing, an intermediate swing, and a larger swing. And it's got to have, there's a lot of criteria where it's got to go, it's got to come before it hits. But if, if you're trading off a small time frame, just because it breaks the low of that green arrow doesn't mean 
that's a bad thing if you're in a downtrend. That's a good thing. That's an entry. I'll show you how to break retest. It means structure's been broken. And a lot of you guys got confused, I think, in the trade room today. They saw a green arrow fire, and then market structure was broken. You want to short that because then your stop's two bars back, very small stop, and it was a huge winner. So I did a video on that at Day Trading the Futures last week. If you guys want to visit that, but I'll do a whole other conference call on that for those of you that like, would like to trade shorter time frames. But the key is this, is that when the trend filter is toggled in, it's trying to get overall market structure. See this one right here, that's a short right here. That's a perfect short opportunity right there also. My shorter term charts call these. And I'll show you, I can, you know, I can get more swings if you want. That is a what? Why is that important right there, guys and gals? That's an indecision bar, right? Indecision bar with red market delta. So you have indecision bar with red market delta in a downtrend. And you have an indecision bar with the arrow. That's your best one with negative market delta. That was negative market delta also. That's another great one. Here's another one. Arrow, downtrend, indecision bar, arrow. And then all of a sudden we get... Um, we get a negative market delta. But so you want to try, and when you have the trend filter on, you want to keep it as simple as that. You can cherry pick these trades. If the market's trending down, okay, look for negative market delta, negative market delta, and, and red arrows. And when my indecision bar matches up with my arrow, that's probably going to be your, your sweetest trade. Okay? Yeah, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't take a green arrow on a hard downtrend anyway. Anyway, Randy, and I'm not, you're right. So if you're in a hard downtrend like crude was today, so crude's downtrending right here like this, right? Crude's in a hard downtrend, and we're cranking down, right, Randy? We're cranking down, cranking down, cranking down, cranking down. And then all of a sudden, you get, let's say you get a buy arrow that fires here on a swing. Let's say a buy arrow fires right there. Let's say it fires right there. You wouldn't take that swing, would you? What I would like to see is saying, okay, that's market structure because that's at a sweet spot. That's a 62 to 76% typically retracing the sweet spot. I want that swing low to break or retest, and I'm going to take that short. Typically what I'll do is I'll come right up to it, I'll retest it, and then she'll go right back down. A lot of them will look like this, the ones that break down through against trend. They'll break. It happened today on crude. It was just a perfect trade. Came back up, tested almost right to the tick on that green arrow, and then negative market down shot down. But, but sometimes it will just keep going down, and it'll come up and test it. It will stop right at that last market structure, and that will fall. Does that make sense, Randy? So you can trade. I don't mind you guys trading small time frames. It's okay. Like today, I don't. I didn't. I don't have it. I didn't have a trend filter uh, on gold and crude today. In on the arrows, there's no trend filter. But it doesn't matter because if you if you were listening how I traded last week, you made quite a few ticks today. Because when it broke market structure, you weren't going long against the overall trend bias. So that's the two ways you can trade this. You can trade longer time frames and just trade the trend filter by itself. Just trade the trend filter. Or you can know when market structure breaks. Like my market structure on my smaller time frame, it got short right there. So there's more opportunity, it got short right there in the trade room. That's a trade room short right there, and it was a nice trade. It was a over a $500 trade with no hardly no heat, no heat at all on that market structure that broke, because this was an arrow earlier on my shorter time frame. My shorter time frame called the arrow here. Whoops. Called the arrow along here, right? Where are we at? It's been a long day here, huh? Right? That called it, that called it right there. So what you can do, that called the low, you can actually, if the market structure is broken, which it was, once it closed, blow it, short it, your stop loss is two bars back. What I like to do, two bars back, there's your stop. Real small stop. And the amount of ticks that produces from these market structure areas is unbelievable. So there's two ways to do this. You can trade a longer time frame and say, listen, I strictly want to do trend trades uh, on a longer longer time frame, and and let's just go ahead and put that in on these. I'll put the trades in on these arrows with positive or negative market delta with market structure. Or you can do smaller time frames and say, hey, I want a lot more 
I want a lot more signals. And if it ever breaks, then it retests, and I get positive or negative mark delta in the direction of the break, I'm going to take that as a failure trade. Failure, failure trades can be just as uh, important as overall trend direction trades. Why? Because they're market structure still. It's still reading market structure. Okay? Yeah, I'll, Dave, I'm going to go over that. Everything. Everything's in the PDF for you, buddy. It's not a rejected area, right, right Dave Peden? Does that make sense, everybody? Uh, I, I, am, I, am I with everybody? There's two ways to do it. You can, you, just because a blue arrow, a green arrow fires in a downtrend, it don't, doesn't mean you buy it. You wait for structure to break and you short it, right? Does, does that make sense? Or if you want to go longer time frame and take out the noise, just put your trend filter on a long time frame and just take arrows of trend. Are we clear on that? Give me a why if we're all clear. Anybody not understand that? That's why I want to do this conference call because when you get this, there's going to be two ways to do this. And either way is a very, very, very uh, uh, neat way how to get in and out of the markets with low risk. Are we all clear? All right, let me show you an example about how we adjust these things. So if, if I come into the indicator, I got swings. I got different swings, right? I got different swings. I can actually, which I'll show you how to do, I can adjust it to take out the trend filter. I can adjust it and get more swings. So I can actually adjust it to get more swings down. Now, why is that important to me as a trader if I want more swings? Why is this green arrow so important in the downtrend? Because I have an additional trade, don't I? Why? Why do I have an additional trade right here? Anybody, if you just listen to what I just told you, why do I have an additional trade? We know this is a short. That's a short today. That's a short. That's a short. It broke market structure, right? You can see it try to get support too. So what would you do? And this is where, Mike, I think you got confused a little bit on trading shorter time frames, which, which the, 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 um, in the, in the uh, crew did. And I hope, hopefully I'm clearing this up for you now, Mike. You can do it either way you want. But you see right there, Mike? Right there would give me an extra additional short. Once it closes right there, that close, my stop loss two ticks above the swing high. I mean, two bars back, swing high. There's my stop. Does that make sense, man? So you can trade if you want more. If you want more arrows to fire off, it's still a neat way to get in because you know these arrows are only firing at market structure, right? They're only firing at market structure. So if you know that, then you can have more more that fires off. Now, if you don't, and you say, you know what, I don't want all these arrows firing off because I I just want I just want strictly to go with trend. You go back in your filter. I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. You take the swing and you put it back to the normal market structure swing. Now what this does is it filters out all the what? All the counter trend trades. So that's going to filter out the trades, the majority of the counter trend trades. Around 80% of them are going to be filtered out now because it's going with just overall structure. Okay? I mean overall trend retracement. So that's how you can trade the system using these arrows. These arrows can be very, very beneficial. If you want to trade more, I'll show you what to do. I have a PDF made out for you, and it's a very, it's not a long page, 100 page PDF. It's right, right to the point. I give the time frame per market. I like to look for trend. If you want to trade market structure breakdowns, I'll give you a shorter time frame. Because I tell you what, there's so much opportunities with market structure breaking with trend that that's why I like even having it up. I like even having shorter time frames up because if I'm waiting on a longer time frame like this to produce a trade, you have to wait till 11:30, right? You have market structure trades here, here, right? Here, another one market structure breakdown here was also down that this one right too has a market structure breakdown right there too. Here you could have sold it here. And you could have sold it on the retest there. Remember, on market structure breakdowns, you get two shots at it. You can sell it on the first close below it or the retest. Okay? You can do the retest or the first close below it on a market structure breakdown. 
The reason I said this, uh, an error produced on, a small, on this small time frame right here is like that. So that's a market structure breakdown, retested. And it's amazing what it'll do on these smaller time frames. It would actually come up and retest that area and make the market delta, and it goes. And I'm, it just the NASDAQ futures, man, crazy like that. The Russell 2000, crazy trades like that, man. And they go. And they don't look back. Sometimes it's just like 60 ticks, 70 ticks, 50 ticks. It's quick. So, but you got to understand the reason behind the software. The software is designed to get market structure. If you trade smaller time frames, right, you're going to get more arrows. I'm going to show you how to do that in the PDF, right, if you do that. Okay? But if you do trade small time frames, not a bad thing. If you know how to trade structure breakdown with overall trend direction. It's a failure trade. A failure, take it on the first break. Make sure you stop. If you take it on the first break, though, guys and gals, okay, if you take it on a first break, we had one on gold today. Gold is a huge trade. Let me show you the gold trade. Man, I tell you what, it's just a big trade. I love this trade. If you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. It's a good thing. Okay, here's market structure. Gold was in a downturn, right? It's breaking down. Market structure said here, didn't close below it. Wick, 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 wick. All of a sudden, blow this up for you, sorry. There's your wicks. Wick, 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 wick. Close right on, close right on, close right on. Let's put it right on the low. There we go. Yeah, that sucker. Okay, so once it closed below market structure, there's a short right there. Go two bars back, one, two. Stop loss is right here. There you go. Look at that short. That's a beauty. Oh, it's 52 and a half, all the way down to my arrow called the low, 41. That was an $1,100 trade, guys, and your stop was right around $65, $70. Bucks. Pretty neat, right? Now you understand how breaking market structure can be very profitable, right? Especially the bounces. And a lot of my traders know this in the room already. This is called a what? Second test, third test breakdown. You'll see those a lot on market structure breaks. So use my arrows, if you use smaller time frames, for momentum plays also. This is a momentum play. It's almost like, I don't know if you guys recall, my number three trade in the room. Not my number three, I mean my number, uh, my number uh, two trade in the room. Number two was a momentum breakdown when we first opened the room. This is very similar to that. Hit, jump, break. Veronica, it's the same setup. But this is more in line of when it breaks, it's going to, it's going to probably go because you're breaking market structure. So the cool thing about this is just like it happened with crude, it happened on the S&P. We had a, almost an 18-point S&P trade like this this last week where it broke, closed below. We had around, I think, a six-and-a-half-point stop, and it went down to, what, 22 points. Same thing, market structure. Okay. Stop is two bars back from the bar that closed below. Make sure you're two bars back and just put your stop in. Keep a small stop. When market structure breaks down, if, you, if you're going to trade these trades like that, make sure you're always two bars back and you're good to go. Third test breakdown. You got Adam. Now here, once again, why was this such a good bounce down here? Do we got an indecision bar in gold today? And decision bar, stop loss is two ticks below the swing low. This one was actually a buy two on a shorter time frame. And decision bar, it actually had an error on the shorter time frame right here. That was another buy. So this is actually a short. So I set up the overall trend direction. Short time frame called that one. And decision bar, I had negative market delta. Arrow fired there on my shorter time frame. So you can see I can play both sides. See, I can play both sides of the market. 
and but you can still play the market structure breakdown. Does that clear things up, Mike? I, I help you out, buddy. Is that I understand that now, man? Just because the green arrow fires doesn't mean you buy it in a hard downtrend. It just means let market structure break and, and take advantage of the trend. Especially if you trade shorter term. Does that help out? You're going to see a lot of them, man. It's going to really, really, really. It's, the reason nice about it is what I like to do is this. I like to have my longer time frame up. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to show you in my PDF a longer time frame to look at. Like the DAX today, I have three gorgeous trades. My goodness. They were just beautiful trades on the DAX. And it's the same thing. The same exact concept. Oops, that's not it. Wrong one, sorry. It's the same concept. Longer time frames. Get the decks up here. All right, so the trend, if the trend filter is on, see these are a lot of swings in here, a lot of swings. So this morning's session, it really caught some nice swings. But the same thing would be for the, the, the DAX market also. If, you know, this is a perfect short right here for us because that's what? That's a indecision bar. In a downtrend with the arrow, this is a perfect short force in decision bar with overall downtrend market structure, right? But this is a longer time frame. But but what happened on the shorter time frames is this: we had a buy arrow here on the short time frame, and this happened right before the long time frame hit. And it was right on the decision bar, so it was a good entry off the short time frame. So if you are listening to what I'm telling you about, and you're trading a short time frame. Is this a short right there, yes or no? I'm trying to show you can trade both short and long term at the same time. It's a short. Why? Why is it a short? It didn't come up on the long time frame. It came up on the short time frame. The short time frame. It's a break retest. It broke structure. The best trades you're going to get is when market structure breaks and retest. And it did exactly that this morning, right after the New York Open. It opened up, it came down, it bounced with the green arrow, and then the MAs rolled over, you broke down, you retest the structure, that started it. So actually, traders ask me, well, why do you even play with short-term, why do you even play with short-term charts? Because market structure is going to break down more in short-term charts than they will on long-term charts. You're going to get a lot of intraday trades that way with high probability trades with low risk. Okay? So my point is, is that look for the retest. Now, what I will do in the next upgrade is what I'm going to do is this. Now, we're going to now, and I, I don't want to pull Gerald's hair out because he's just got all this stuff coded, but it's easy to send another updated program out to you. What I'm working on now, when market structure fails, I'm going to have a horizontal line that goes in the future straight across, right? And then once it breaks, what, 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 and here's what's going to happen is when this swing low is broken, the line's actually going to come up and come across like this in the future. And then you can see where, where the retests are and so on. Yeah. Don't, don't tell any job any upgrades right now. You'll be like, what the hell? So, but that's something I, I, I am going to, once you guys get used to it and get really good at it, then that's something that, uh, that I will be doing. Uh, it's a free upgrade for you guys that it'll, it will draw the market structure breakdowns. Now, clear to me, don't you need arrow after market structure? If it retests a negative market delta, no. But uh, the, if you get an arrow that fires, which I do on short time frames, the arrow fired on the short time frame right here, Joe. This is a longer term time frame, bud. The arrow fired right there. Yes, the best is with an arrow firing. You can do it if it, as long as it doesn't close a candle, whole body candle close above structure. You can take negative market delta, put your stop two ticks above the swing high, and take a small risk trade. Yep. 
but yet the arrow did fire. This is a longer term time frame. This is a nine Samarinko. This is not a small time frame. But there's so many market structure trades you can trade with overall trend direction. If you trade market structure, okay, which a lot of you are going to do this, and I'm going to tell you why, because I'm finding myself in a habit of doing the same thing. These market structure breaks are so robust with small stops is that you almost perform over the overall arrow firing in the direction of the overall trend because they're so they catch a lot of wrongly positioned traders, right? I mean, that's what they're designed to do. They're catching the wrongly positioned traders. I, I'm finding the push is a lot harder on these initially because it's catching a lot of wrongly positioned traders, which is good for us, adds fuel to the fire. So you're going to like them once you understand them. And I'll do a whole conference call on them. I, I just, before you get the software, I had to make sure you under, understand that because I didn't lock this software to one time frame. The one thing I didn't want to do, I thought about it saying, okay, I'm going to lock it to one time frame. That's it. I made this thing so versatile that you can actually create your own trading uh, monster with this thing on having a long time frame for your, for your swings. And you can take market structures uh, with trend and market structure breakdowns on shorter time frames. You're never, you're never going to be asleep with this system because market structure is always broken or broken out of. It's always a continuation or breaks below it. So there's structure breaking all day long and continuations. So it really keeps you on your toes. Um, I like trading both. I like long-term and short-term. It's up to you. You can just trade long-term if you want, or you can trade both. Um, it's up to you. You guys have the versatility on doing that. Any other questions? Yes, correct, Bert. Yep. Any other questions at all? So I'm going to give you exact instructions on the PDF. You'll get the exact instruction guide, how to set everything up, long-term, short-term, market structure, all that stuff. You know, doesn't matter what it is. You guys, I'll have everything set up for you. Any questions, 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 questions? Here's a nice market structure right there. It retests in our short time frame. This is a long time frame. What happens on these long time frames, they'll catch the low and high sometimes all by themselves. But if you see a market structure break, I'm telling you, it's just it's robust. It's, it's like they caught all the wrongly positioned traders. And it's, it's like you get so much activity in that direction. It's, just, it's crazy. So it doesn't matter what market you put up. It works on all time frames right across the board. Um, if you, this is a nine sim, so it's a longer time frame. I only like to do the DAX on the nine sim as my longest time frame. But you know, if you do get market structure that ever breaks, they're really good ones to uh, pop into. Any questions? Now, if I go to a smaller time frame, let's say I go to a smaller time frame now. I go to six and a five, and so on. Let's look at structure here. So if I go to small time frames, I'm in a hard downtrend, and you see this fire, you're not taking this arrow, guys and gals. You shorten that bar right there. That's if you go small, small. Now if you go real small, you can go real. You can go all the way down to like a three or four, and get tons of signals on market structure. I prefer longer time frames, but here we go. This is just this is with the, this is with the overall trend filter. So, but let's just say you want to go a smaller time frame. And you're like, okay, Jay, I'm an active trader. Let's let's have some fun today. Trade trade these markets. So if you do that, if your trend is down, would you sell these with negative market delta? And this is a three sim Rico. Would you sell these? Yes or no? And it's a small time frame. Would you short those? Absolutely. With negative market delta, right? But as we come down, now watch. We're downtrending all day, right? As we come down, and this is at the close. It's a bad example. I'll try to close. I'm trying to find a buyer. I don't see any. Oh, here we go. Here we go. 
This was in the morning before it started rolling over, though. You see how market structure in a small time frame? Now watch. If you're in an uptrend, let me let, 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 let me let me tell you this. If you're in an uptrend, at the time we were in a mild uptrend here, would this be a buy? Would that be a buy with an arrow? Yes or no? Would you buy that? There's your market structure. Trend is still up. Hasn't rolled over yet. It's, this, the trend was still up here on this one too. It started rolling over on this one. Would you buy that? Matt says he would. Anybody else? Anybody else take a shot at that? You would. You're going to see W and M tops like this all the time. What happens is on smaller time frames, you're going to see a lot of M tops and W bottoms on small. This is why I like using longer time frames and shorter time frames. I don't care so much about how many arrows that fire. I care about when market structure is actually breaking on the other side and am I getting arrows in the direction of trend. The best arrows to take, and let me give you a little pointer. I'm going to help you out right now in small time frames. When my 20 and 50 cross, you take the first retracement arrow you see in a smaller time frame and it's typically a winner. Let me explain myself. You can put it just a simple 20 and 50 moving average on this thing. Right? Let's just put a 20 and simple move. Let's just put, put this up here. Let me show you an example. I'm going to show you a really neat trade that works out well. I'll put an EMA on this thing. Two EMAs. A lot of ways you can trade this. It's really neat. Well, when you deal with market structure, it's really cool because you get a lot of opportunity. Let's go 20. Let's go. That should go one tip. Change the color of this guy. I'm going to show you a neat little setup with these arrows that work really well. And you can overlay this on your arrow chart if you want. All right. You see when the 20 crosses down? And you're going to see this on all markets. See when it first crosses down there? My first retracement arrow is typically a large runner. That one. So out of all these arrows that came up, and I don't care how far back I go back and look, it works the same way. All these arrows that come up, that's your best entry to get in right there. You know when we did this, guys and gals? We did this on the J signal, didn't we? The first what? The first crossover, first retracement, look for the J signal, Fibonacci's the fire. Anybody remember that trade setup? You guys remember that trade setup? Well, you don't have to worry about Fibs now because these are already Fib based. Right there they are. That's going to be your best one. And it doesn't matter what MA you use. I like a little longer term, maybe a 20 and a 110, and take the first arrow. It's a really neat little setup to do on the Rinko bar. Now, it doesn't work on minute charts. It doesn't work on, I'll try it on minute charts. You get killed. It doesn't work on, uh, it really works on my Rinko really well because I like to see an indecision bar too. I like to see the indecision bar and the arrow fire at the same time. Everybody clear on that setup? So you can actually put a simple, two simple MAs. I prefer a 20 EMA or a weighted. You can even do simple and a 110 is what I would put up if you want to just cherry pick some of these arrows. Are we clear on that, guys? Everybody understand that? The first retracement is typically the best. It doesn't matter what market you look at. I don't care what market it is. I go all the way back. Let's go back to here. Right here, 1030 in the morning. There's your cross. There's your arrow, red, 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 indecision bar. There's your best entry to cherry pick a short time frame. 
So all these traders are worried. They're like, oh my God, there's so many arrows. It's crazy. It doesn't matter because you're buying market structure on the first retracement. Yeah, yep, yeah, Alan, I would do that over top the arrows. I trade a picket. But that's your best sweet spot trade right there. I'm actually, I have another uh, addition to the, um, for you guys that are leasing the program too. This is automatically going to show this with a triangle. So it's something I'm working on also after we get everything done. A triangle will automatically pop up on the first arrow retracement. It will fire right below the arrow to tell you that is a first entry. We will be doing that also down the road. So I, I do have a few things up my sleeve I want to do extra since I've been trading this thing. So fire just like that. So you can cherry pick your trades even more. And I don't care how far back you look, any market, it's the same exact setup. I can go back, back, back. Just keep it right here. Let's see if we can get another. Right there it is. There's my cross. Imagine that. There's my market structure buy. Is that the first one? Yep. Guess what? Buy it. Make sense? You can pick it. It's, you can pick it apart all day long like this on a short time frame. This is a three sim wrinkle, I think. Yeah, this is a three sim wrinkle. This is really short. Everybody understand that? Just a simple 2110. I'm just trying to help. Hey, I want you guys to be successful in the market. Just because you trade a small time frame and you see tons of arrows firing, it don't mean you got to take all the arrows. I want to see you guys be successful. I want to see you be very successful. And I can go back. It doesn't matter. Let's go back again. I'm just I'm not cherry picking these things. Let's see this downtrend right here. There's the downtrend. Is this the first arrow? There's my cross. Here's my first arrow. Indecision bar. That was a 63.80 sell. That was an $800 trade. And you had around a $60, $70 stop. Do you see my point, guys? All these guys out there, they think, well, just because it's an arrow, i got to fire. And my, my, my members know this better than anything. That, did you take every Fibonacci dot? Did you take every Fibonacci dot, guys, and gap on J-Signal? Did you take everyone? No. What the arrows do, though, is they allow you to know exactly where the breakdown is going to be, where the Fibonacci dots did not, because now I know the exact market structure. I know the exact breaking point in the market to the exact bar. With the fibs, what could they do? Blue, 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 blue. Trend change, right? Does that make sense, guys and gals? This, we know the market structure break. Now, if you're in a downtrend, can you take that? Yep. Can you take that? Yep. Why? The decision bar, arrow, the trend. Can you take this? Yep. I think you're getting my point. All right. Go back. Find another cross here. Here's another cross. Where's the cross? That one came right here. Shop market, still got your first target. So my point is, you can do it on any time frame. Here we go. Remember, this is a three Semrico. All right. You see the cross, and this is a, this gets you out of this stuff where it's at an area, but it's not an inflection point. See how neat this is? Here's another big trade, real big one. There's your cross. There's your retracement. Now, like I said, these won't even come up. Uh, the triangle is only going to fire up at one spot. When I do upgrade the software to my next upgrade, it's going to look like this. It's going to be right above the first retracement arrow. It's got to be the first retracement arrow and the little triangle so you don't miss them after the MA crosses in case you're looking at a lot of different markets. Okay? So I showed you three techniques now, didn't I? I showed you three techniques. I showed you long-term arrows. I showed you trend trading with the filter, even on small and short-term time frames. And I showed you a simple MA cross retracement with the arrow. Take the first one. That's three setups that you can look at every single day in any given market with this system. Because remember, these arrows are the sweet spot in the market. It's automatically calculating the sweet spot in the market where it should reverse. 
but I'm giving you tools to show you, even if you want to trade off a smaller time frame, it works very, very well because you can cherry pick your trades. Does that help everybody out tonight? The next conference call, I'll go in detail about market about the retest market structure. Do you, do you guys got a, a sense of what to do now? Everybody understand? Everybody clear? Jot down a 20 and a 110 though. 20 and a 110. Doesn't matter if it's simple, exponential, weighted, volume, moving average, it doesn't matter. I say 20 and 110 because I like that as a trend filter. <clears throat> the 20 and 50 is a little bit too uh, erratic. I like going out to about a 110. So I used to trade my stocks on back in the 90s and uh, it smooths things out a little bit. Plus you can look at that first cross. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter what you trade, small time frames. I don't care what you trade, guys. It can be the NASDAQ futures. It can be anything. This is a real small, NASDAQ has tons of them on small time frames. But the key is it's the first retracement. The first retracement. So if, if I'm a NASDAQ future trader, right, and I'm looking to trade the NASDAQ futures, then if I see a cross, if I see a cross right here, then I'm going to short this guy right here. I want to short him right there. There's my shorting opportunity. If I, if, but you want it close to the cross too. It, that, this is a three sim, so you're going to see a lot of trades set up here. That's a short opportunity right here. First sell retracement. Another short opportunity. The first retracements, they are just, they're dynamic, man, because they're really, really cool. There's your first retracement sell here. And this is small, this is a small time frame, but like I said, you can have fun with this software because you, you, you don't take all the arrows on a small time frame because if it's small, you're going to get banged around a lot if you take all the arrows. So, you know, you can just take, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what you want to do. Longer time frame, short. If you do this, I prefer the MA cross, first retracement, if you're going to do that because you got such a lot of opportunity on such a smaller time frame, but you can even do it long, longer time frame too. Like here's gold today. This is a sell on gold. That's a short, right? That's a great short on gold. And here's one right here. Here's another short on gold. It caught a big one this morning at, or it started this afternoon at two o'clock. Real big short going into Look at that. Look at that trade. I mean, that stop was right here. It be, look at the MA cross. First retracement. There it is. Your small stop, 52. That's over a $1,000 trade, $1,100 trade. Small stop. First retracement. Here we go. Here's another retracement. You, didn't, you missed that one? Oh, well. Let's get this one then. Let's go ahead and jump on this guy. Let's jump on that guy right there. I called the exact high on that swing. And that guy was at uh, 51 also. There's another 51, I'm sorry, 61, 52. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's another, what, $700 trade? That's $1,700 on two trades. Let's go look for this one on the bounce here. Okay, here we go. Here's a cross. Let's go and take the first retracement right here in a small market structure swing. There you go. Two ticks below the swing low. Didn't stop you out. Right there. Caught that big up swing, 56. 63, another around $600 move. I think you're getting my point. Here's another market structure breakdown. There's my first retracement and decision bar. Another gold trade, 57, 53. You get my point. I, I, think, I think some traders got concerned. They're like, listen, these small time frames, oh my God, there's so many arrows firing. You know, my life is terrible, right? It's excellent. Your life is good because the software is going to pick out the sweet spot retracement on the first retracement to give you the highest probability trade. And that's just one way to skin, skin it. You know, here's another one. Cross down. There's your short. Like I said, I will automate this for you so none of these other errors pop up. I'm just going to have one little triangle pop up for you. And I'm going to have it on a, uh, one chart where the triangle pops up. You won't see any of the other of this stuff. I'm only going to do it on the first cross when my errors fire. There's another, another winner. I mean, they're just. Remember, you take the first retracement arrow. Don't worry about this stuff. These are small retracements that the market structure is doing. Don't worry about that stuff. Here's where you go. Here's where you go. 
this is now listen, this is a small time frame. All right, here's your cross, here's your long, and decision bar. I can go on and on, go days on this. There's your cross, there's your short. Remember, it's a short time frame. You don't like a three, go to four. You don't like a four, go to five. All right? There's your cross. There's your long. Big move up on that one. All right, I can go on and on, guys. Here, here it is. You want to take the first cross. There's your first cross. This thing just nailed this little sucker. Look at that move. Well, bam. That move from, gosh, 33 to 42. Another thousand dollar trade. Are, 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 are you getting that concept about my, about my cross on the first retracement? It makes things a lot easier to understand now, right? Now you understand it better? Do you guys understand the first retracement at the cross now? Or if you want to go larger time frame, go larger time frame. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one thing. I think a lot of you are going to be into the, the market structure trades with the first retracement. I think it works pretty well. I'll be at 815 tomorrow morning. 815. Yeah, we're still on a 20 and 50. I only like doing this on the arrows, Gene. I use a 20 and a 110 on my first retracement arrow, long or short, because I, I want to see market structure actually break down. Yep. All right. I hope I helped you guys out a little bit. I hope I cleared things up for you guys and gals. Um, we're going to have the charts down for the first six hours here, and I'll have them up at midnight. Run them, and then we'll run them 24 hours tomorrow. Uh, we want to get uh, everything done. I get all this stuff over to Gerald. So it's PDF, everything done. And then uh, we'll get that, uh, the software's coming out to you guys and gals. Remember, three ways to trade. You, you can trade overall trend filler, error direction, longer time frame, right? You can trade market structure breakdown, it breaks a low or high of the arrow, and a retest. You can trade the MA cross, retest, it must have an arrow. Now, hey, that's the thing about it. If you do a move and average cross, you've got to have an arrow to fire up because you want to be in the sweet spot of the market. You can't just guess it or you're going to get killed in the market. Do not guess it. You can't just put a move and average on a blank chart and try to take the first retracement. You'll get killed because you don't know if it's into market structure or not. It's got to be in an intermediate, short, or longer term market structure. All right. I hope I helped everybody out tonight.